Welcome in this tutorial. And in this chapter, we're going to see how to do payments using Open Banking. If you haven't seen the account flow, I really recommend that you have a look first, just because we will cover there the security flow, and I'm not going to be in details in this video how work the security flow. Right. So six steps as the account flow. Uh, the difference really is at the end. Uh, the beginning is the same. You have consult with Alice. You do a consent preparation. Different payload, obviously, but we're going to see that later. The consent between Alice and the bank, which is just confirming that what you agreed on step one, you exchange a token, and then start a different. So instead of accessing the data, you're actually doing what we call a payment submission. You're actually trying to triggering the payment. All right, so you, you, you do a post instead of a get at this point. And the bank is doing the payment in the background and to be aware of if the payment has been completed or not, you do what we call uh, a payment pooling. Right? You, you need to say, is the payment ready? Is the payment ready? Is the payment ready? Uh, obviously, a bit painful to do, especially if you have a lot of payments. So this is why there is um, an event notification APIs that has been in place that we will cover in another tutorial. So let's see all the important, all the steps. So slightly different. You are confirming a payment. So you're going to select the bank and that Alice wants to share for drop bank in our example. And there you go. Then you start to do the constant preparation. So different payload, obviously. You're saying which amount you want to be paid, and you also say what is your account that you want to be paid on. And you send that to the bank and you get a constant ID that you send it to the request parameter. Then the request parameter is attached into the get parameter of this slash authorized endpoint that you redirect Alice to the bank. Once you redirected Alice to the bank, it, she's going to authenticate and consent to the payment this time, so 100 pounds. And again, same spirit as well, go quickly, you get a code that you're going to then exchange. So you exchange the code to an access token, um, and you can see that it's kind of find it with the payments. With this access token, you then submit the payment to trigger the, the actual payment at this point. But because you don't know if it's been completed, then you still do need to do the pooling, as I was saying. So basically, same spirit is that you send with the same access token and consent ID, and you're asking, is it ready? And what you want to see, basically, is a status saying, accepted settlement completed, which is telling you that the shop can send the goods. Right, so let's see that in practice. So same as the account flow, so we're going to go quickly. Uh, client assertion dropped, but you need to do the client credential flow. So you store it in the memory of Postman, all right? And then you do the actual client credential. It's a very simple endpoint, really. But this time you say in the scope that you want to do a payment, and you got this limited uh, access token, which only allow you to create or read consent. You send the consent, and that's the interesting bit, is, um, is the actual payload. So we send the access token, yeah, is a payload. So in the payload, you can see it's completely different. There is way more data that you're sending in there. The open banking standard is going to tell you exactly what all they means, but the important thing is like the payment here. As a response, same spirit, um, the bank is sending you the same payload, but with three extra headers, um, the concert ID and the status, telling you that you're waiting for authorization. So what we need to do now um, is to create the request parameter. Yes, yeah, just showing you that you can actually read the consent at this point, which is exactly the same payload, and you get a waiting for authorization. So now you create the request parameter. It's really the same as the account flow. That's why I really recommend you see the account flow first. You create it as a jot. We store it in the memory for Postman just for the convenience, and we do the hybrid flow. Again, so we use the Postman trick to get the URI built, and now we go to our web browser and as Alice. So I'll clean my web browser, so just to make sure you can see that there's nothing saved in there. And now I'm Alice, right? So we use Toto for Dev uh, TPP, uh, UPSU, sorry. We log in. 
This time, the bank, I realize, you know, that's, thanks to the consent ID, the bank has been able to say, well, this is a payment, 165, and you select an account at this time. So I pay with my French bill account. All right, so then it's done. So I get the code, I need to exchange it. So I take the code from the fragment, and I go back to Postman. You see, you can do that automatically, just Postman, the Postman experience make it a, a bit weird if I may say. So you copy the code, uh, client assertion in the same way to authenticate, and you exchange it. There you go, so you get an access token. An access token with consent, so that's why we call it access token with consent, and we store it in the memory. This is where the things start to be different. So you can do a confirmation of funds, so that's for PSD2. Uh, this is basically, you can call an endpoint, which is going to tell you if uh, the PSU has enough fun and the account that is selected, which is true in the case. Which saves you a bit of time, you know, you don't need to pull if you already know that there is no money in there. And just to show you the get parameter, uh, the get consent, you can see the status has been changed to authorized, which allow us to actually send the payment submission. Because it's been authorized, because the access token, everything is ready, we can do that. And we need to repay the payload when you miss it done. This is for security reason. We send our access token with consent in there. And what do we got? We got, yeah, so we can see that our consent has changed. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, a bit of difficulty there, this postman. All right. All right, here you go. Um, let me find a way. Right, here you go. Um, so here's a request. So we repeat exactly the same, but you can see that the status has actually changed, um, is accepting sentiment in process. And uh, so what you need to do uh, later is calling the get domestic payment. And you do that again and again until it's changed to complete it. Right. Well, we're going to stop there for today, right? But you, you get the principle. You need to that's that's kind of the pooling method. You just do that again and again. All right, so in the postman, you can see that there is more than just the payment we did. Uh, instead of going through that piece of video that is like two hours long, I think it's fairly easy. Um, just go in the postman, just play with them, trying to understand what the different things that they do. There is international payment, this is quite cool. There is file payment, which allows you to send a bulk of payments, so more than one payment in one go. Um, you know. Plenty of one that you you are, you can try. I think there is seven in total. So recommend that you play with them. The security, all the flow is exactly what we just did in the video. So if you like the video, don't forget to like it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, just uh, it will help me if you can subscribe to the channel. And I see you in the next video.